when you're looking into buying an old camper, definitely look at these cables here. Um, when I got the camper, one of the cables was already broken. Um, now I got a great deal on the camper, so I was like, I don't really care. Um, and I'm the kind of person that doesn't mind, you know, getting my hands dirty and doing the work myself. It would probably cost quite a bit to get the camper, uh, to get it rewired, uh, if you're going to have a professional come in and do it, but I don't, I don't know. I've done all the work myself, and I've learned a lot in the meantime, but definitely take a look at the, uh, the cables. Okay, before we get started on any actual work, let's take a look at what we got going on. The cable that snapped was the cable in this tube here. It's the one that pushes up this corner. My crank is all the way on the other side here, outside of this uh, wall. So, looking inside, we've got our, our crank, our plate, our eye bolts, and the four little cables that come from this point. And they go down the pulleys. And they wrap back around and they come and pull the plunger up to the springy bar that pulls up, pushes up every four, all four corners. Now the cable that is, there's, the, there's where the cable has snapped. I kind of knew this was happening and this is coming. Um, just lucky it, it happened when I was home instead of when I was on vacation. Um, so what we're going to do, luckily I'm going to cut this wire here. I'm going to use this as a pull cable to pull the new wire in wired up on this end and on the other end and hopefully it won't take that long. One of the reasons I was dreading having to do this is as you can see the cable goes over a few pulleys throughout its journey to the back. Alright, so hopefully by using the original cable that's there as a pull cable then it won't be that big of a deal. But it's going to go through this cable, the pulley back here, up and over the wheel well, down underneath this side, through a pulley right here, all the way down to this side, which is underneath this cabinet, under a pulley and back into this bar. I want to first start by saying I have the, the pop-up completely popped up to the top. And I've got it braced on all four corners with these uh, metal poles. These are actually uh, pool fence poles. And they were the exact height, so if I do, which I've already done, I actually loosen the cables to release the tension so I can work on it. I'm not going to be lowering the top at all. It's locked into place. Now on the outside of my camper, we have this bar. This is what, a uh, you know, telescoping square bar that pulls up this, or pushes up this side. This is one of the main reasons you want to make sure you have a good support on the inside so when you pull this down that uh, it doesn't uh, come collapsing down on you. But in my unit all we do is push it down. Now inside this, I'm going to get a good shot of it, is a, push it all the way down, is the plastic piece that the spring bar actually pushes up in the middle and pushes up on this main piece. Now this piece was attached to the roof and stays stationary. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the spring, this, the spring bar all the way down, as far down into the unit so I can pull it out the, out, the back side of the bar. Um, this way I can get the little the cable so I can replace the cable. So we're going to be taking whatever we can to push this down and get this bar pushed out as far as we can. A quick bit of advice before you start messing with the bar or trying to get the cable out, make sure you tie. If you're going to be using the old cable to pull the new cable through, make sure you tie that on first. Because um, once you start playing with the bar over here, it'll start pulling the cable and if it gets to a point where you can't uh, get to it, then you might lose the opportunity off to do the hard way. So, I went ahead, I went ahead and tied these two together with some electrical tape. Um, hopefully they'll, it'll be strong enough to, uh, to make its way all the way where I need it to be. I'm going to keep a close eye on it as I pull through, um, but uh, make sure you do that first. And just like that, 
some slow pulling and monitoring it, we got our new cable. Yeah, look, it just popped off. Got our new cable here. So just be very mindful. Do your best taping it together. One thing you had to do is you can't, oh, well, I couldn't, overlap them like this because I would make a wire too thick to get to where it needed to go. So I needed to go basically end to end and then do some taping. Um, but it works for me. Hopefully it'll work just as good for you. Everything seems to be working out pretty good, smoothly so far. Now this is the plunger that's inside. So after I pushed down from the outside that bar all the way through, I was able to reach my pinky in there. The plunger was about to here. And I was able to get my finger in that and pull it out. So at the end of this, the wire, this is basically how it fits in there just perfectly into the tube. So you can see there's a little stopper on the end and that slips into this plunger and it goes in there and pushes the spring bar up. So what now? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut this plunger off. I'm actually not going to plunge this plunger off. I'm going to, again, use the, hopefully, if we're lucky, be able to pull the, use this existing wire to pull the new wire through and down the pipe to this end so I can put the new uh, cr uh, crimp on it and put it in the plunger, put it back in, and this end will be done. So let's see how that works. Eureka! We've got it! Get the new cable coming through now. So we're just going to be cutting off this tape, putting in the crimp, putting it on the plunger, and shoving it back down in the hole. And that'll then screwing this bar. Obviously, now there's a screw. Um, I kind of missed this step, but there's a screw right here that holds the bottom, this back of this bar down to the, the floorboard. So uh, putting that screw back in, and this side will be done. This is what I'm using for uh, the clamp on the wire. Uh, but there's a Home Depot just over a buck. Um, and uh, I'm going to show I'm just fishing the wire through, bending it back through, and then uh, reducing it. And then I'm going to crimp it down so it doesn't move. And this will fit inside the plunger. Okay, so I've got the clamp on. You can see on this plunger there's one side that's a little bit th uh, thicker than others. This is the uh, side that the cable has to come out of. So it's going to basically feed through that open side. The plunger's going to go in, uh, the little clamp is going to go inside the plunger. Just like that. And then push it down there as far as it goes. And then this piece, this is obviously the wire that goes back down. This piece will easily fit in there in the part, push it all the way in, and use the cable on manually, get that in there. And then I'm going to just screw this down, and then we're going to go to the other side and do our best to get the tension right. Um, I might need to take a little finagling, but that's going to be the time consuming part, but this part is pretty much done. The tube is in there, the new wire is in place. So. This is the hard part. The other time, the other part is the time-consuming part. So, all right. Before we pull that wire tight inside, we want to make sure that we line this back up, put this back together. Um, pretty, it's hard to do with one hand, but pretty simple to do. There you go. I had to put the phone down for a second, but uh, got the piece back in. The reason you'd want to do this first is if you get it all tightened up and you forget to do this, you're gonna to have to undo it to be able to get it back in place. So, you get this in. The metal bar isn't, or the spring bar is not all the way in. It's probably about halfway up so far, so. But make sure you do this. All right, so I got the wire pulled all the way through. There's a back pulley right back here that I had to go through. Because behind this pulley, down through here, I went ahead and attached it using the old hardware. There's nothing wrong with the hardware. Um, one bit of advice, I did replace this, not today, but earlier, um, when I did my new wire, I found that uh, the hardware, that, that uh, all this hardware here was kind of old and bent, and I just didn't like it, so what I did is uh, I went ahead and got some new eye bolts, as you can see here. Now, when you go to your local hardware store, all your eye bolts have an opening right here. And... I didn't like that. I thought that uh, 
they'd probably be fine. They were rated for enough weight, but if one of these cables broke and the weight was put on the other eye bolts, that these start might, might start splitting open or pulling apart. So I took it down to my local mechanic shop, uh, welding sh welders. Uh, bleh. Took it down to my local welder, and I had them just spot weld the opening so it's uh, nice and secure. It's a, f a full circle there. Um, this obviously will strengthen this. I beefed up this bolt too. The size that was here when I got the camper was a size smaller, thinner. So I went ahead and uh, beefed that up. And when I did that, I had to take this metal plate. It's got the five holes in it. Get a better. There we go. This metal plate right here that had the five holes in it. I had to go. The steel plate. I had to get those holes drilled out. Um, my next job, which I'm not going to do today is to replace this main wire here. Um, one of the reasons I'm having this problem is when the, you can already see right now, the wires that are here, they're twist, twisted up. Um, when this, when the main cable comes down, it twists, and when it comes back up, it twists back up. Um, now the problem I'm having is, and the reason this cable frayed, is you can actually see the groove on the top of this. One of the, this cable here, somehow during when it was down, would get on top of this like this and start riding on this piece of metal. So I'd have to pop it up a few, you know, a few feet, and then I'd have to come in here. Um, someone have to push up on that side of the camper, and I'd have to take a um, screwdriver and pop it over um, so it didn't run right on top of there. So um, that's one of the reasons this wire got frayed and then eventually broke. So um, the reason it's doing that is the fact that. Um, the wires spinning and as you can see here this Contraption here is I think I don't know if this is an absolute one of the reasons it's causing it is It's bent. It's not it's not lined up correctly Now I've went ahead and done what I can to get it back. It was worse than it is now, but I've re reinforced it with some wood screwed into the floorboard here. I've put some new bolts in um, but we're still having the weight of the wires being pulled, the backside, on this is shifting this whole thing over this way. So I've done what I can to make sure that that is reduced, but I, there's only so much I can do. And there we go, it's back in place. All the cables are there and um, tightened up where they need to be. New cable, this actually, I was surprised at the time this, little time this took me to do, I was expecting it to take me a lot longer. I've probably been out of this for maybe two hours at the most. Um, right now, there's not a whole lot of tension on the wire still, but I've, you know, it's purposely done that. Every time I crank my camper up, I put my bars in place, and then I re release the tension just a little bit, maybe a quarter turn off the crank. Um, it's still locked, so if for whatever reason the, all four bars or one of the bars give out, the cables were there to hold it. But uh, anything I can do to extend the life of my cable system, I'm going to do that, and I think having less weight and less tension on it at any given time is better. So that's that. Oh, the, the final test will happen when I crank it down. If it doesn't go all the way down or something of that nature, then I might find that I may have to do a little bit of adjustment, but I'm not going to do that right now. Everything is in place where it needs to be. The stuff I used today was easily found at Home Depot. I spent about $15 on all the parts to replace just the one cable. and. Actually, I overbought, so I didn't actually need some things. So it's not an expensive project. It's just the time and uh, the patience to do it. So um, I'm very happy with uh, how easy it turned out and how inexpensive it was. So something you can definitely try at home. If you have any questions, uh, put it down in the comments. I'll do my best to get back with you.